when I first started learning about entrepreneurship and I first started seeing success in entrepreneurship, this is years ago now, I was so obsessed and I was so excited because I finally, for the first time, started making decent money. And if you want to quantify decent money, it was probably two or $300,000 a year as an entrepreneur from my own entrepreneurial hustles. When I first started doing that, I was so excited because I felt like I finally proved the system wrong. Now, to give you a little bit of backstory, if you don't know, I did not go out and become a doctor, but my parents were not happy that I was not going to become a doctor. It created a lot of tension, a lot of controversy. So my parents and I kind of compromised and I went to law school instead. But when I was in law school, I knew I wasn't going to be an attorney. So I worked on just my own stuff. And that was when I first started to really see my success as an entrepreneur while I was going to school because I went to law school part-time working on my businesses full-time and I worked on a lot of businesses. I was working in real estate. I was a real estate salesperson. I worked in real estate wholesaling. I had an e-commerce business and I was investing in real estate. So I was doing a lot of different things, but I started to see some success now as an entrepreneur and I was so excited that I started telling all of my friends, you need to go out and become an entrepreneur because there is this whole world of opportunity out there where you can earn more money the way that you want. Now, I didn't say that you're going to have more freedom, but I said that you can earn more money and then you can take this money and invest it and be more aggressive with your investments. And I would pitch this so much that some of my friends got very annoyed by this, but a couple of my friends were really intrigued by this idea. And I actually got a couple of my friends, or one for sure, to quit his job. The other one kind of went part-time on his job to quit their jobs and start working with me full-time. That way they can work on building their businesses. And... That was when I learned the hard way that not everybody is meant to be an entrepreneur. Not everybody has the risk tolerance to be an entrepreneur. Not everybody has the discipline to be an entrepreneur. And not everybody is just built to be an entrepreneur, period. That's okay. You don't have to be an entrepreneur. And, you know, this whole idea and world of entrepreneurship is so glorified now that, oh, it's so cool to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, so being an entrepreneur is hard. And it's not for everybody. It's not any cooler or better or grander to be an entrepreneur versus being an intrapreneur or being an employee, okay? It does not matter what you do. If you are an entrepreneur, though, the way that you can build wealth is by working to build your business, build your income, take the money that you're making, and invest it back into the business. And then eventually, as the business grows big enough, that's when you can take money out and invest it in things like stocks, real estate, and other places, if you are an employee or you're an entrepreneur working in somebody else's business, the way that you build long-term and real wealth now is you're working to get a paycheck and now you take as much of this paycheck as possible and you're going to take this money and you're going to put it into stocks. You're going to put it into real estate. You're going to put it into buying other businesses because now you are working to build equity, not in your own business because when you're working in somebody else's business, it's not your company, but you should still work there and Treat it like your own company. That way you can continue to get raises. You can continue to make more money. But then you take the money that you're earning from this company that's not yours, and then you're going to build equity. Not in that company, unless you're allowed to. Some companies will have that exception where you can build that equity in there. That's something you can consider if your company allows that. But most companies won't. But then you're going to want to work to build equity in other assets, real estate investments, rental properties, or stocks, or other businesses. See, when you're building your own company... Now you're working to build equity in your own company. And the way that you can do that now is you're working to scale the brand. You're working to grow the brand. You're working to increase whatever it is that you're doing until now you want to either diversify or you no longer have a real growth potential in that business where now you can take the money and put it somewhere else. And this is where now, again, our economic system is designed to do one thing. It's designed to build an education system that produces employees. Now, why is this so important? Because we live in what's called a capitalist system. And in a capitalist system, there are two ways you can make money. You can make money from your labor, and you can make money from your capital. And guess what? In a capitalist system, which one is going to make you more wealth? Is it from your labor? Is it from your capital? It says it in its name, your capital. But what's interesting is our entire education system is designed to teach you how to make money from your labor. So we are taught to make money from our labor, right? You go to school 
And if you do good in school, you're going to be able to go to a good college. If you go to a good college, the whole thinking is you're going to be able to get a good job. If you get a good job, you're going to make a big salary, which means you're making money from your labor. And this is why I keep saying it's not just how much money you make that matters, it's what you do with the money you make. You can make money from your labor, but the question is, what do you do with this money from your labor? Most of us never learn a thing about money when we're in school. I can tell you from experience. I went through high school, I went through college, I went through a year of grad school, and then I went through law school, and never once did I learn a thing about investing, building wealth, cash flow. I had to learn these things on my own. And so we learn how to earn from our labor. But in a capitalist system, the people who are the wealthiest, think of anybody, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, Donald Trump, it doesn't matter who you think of, and I'm not saying this from a political perspective, think of anybody who has money, Warren Buffett. What do they do? They own assets. If you want to win in this economic system, in this capitalist system, the way you win is by owning assets. Now, how can you own these assets? This is what the capitalist system is. You have to use your capital to own assets. You can use your labor, your job to make money, use a piece of this money to go out and buy assets, stocks, real estate, businesses, whatever it might be. Or you can create that asset. That's being an entrepreneur. You can go out and build an asset. You can go out and create something that does not exist right now. And this is where the real wealth is built. If you really want to make money, that is what you have to put your focus on. If you are not an entrepreneur, that means you got to take your focus right now on not spending all your money, working to earn more money, and taking the difference between what you earn and what you spend and putting this money to work. Putting this money to work in the stock market, putting this money to work in rental properties, putting this money to work to buy businesses, putting this money to work by investing in startups, by investing in other businesses. That way now you have equity in these assets. That way now your money is working to earn you more money. Because when you go to work, you are working to earn money. But there's a limit to how much you can work. There's a limit to how much you can get paid. There's a limit to how many hours a day you can work. But there's no limit to how much your money can work. And this is where now it's how do you scale what you can do? And there's a lot of similarities now between being an investor and being an entrepreneur because I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur from an earlyish age, even though I wasn't allowed to do that. But I knew that I had this like entrepreneurial bug. But what's interesting to me is as I went through my entrepreneurial journey, I went through a lot of different things. The first thing that I did was I was essentially a glorified party promoter. I was an event planner and doing parties and whatever. But what I learned was I didn't actually build a business because the way it worked is I would go out and host a party. I was in college hosting college parties. I would go out and host a party and I would get paid. And I was making good money for a college kid. But I had essentially just created a job for myself because the way it worked is I would have to go out and host a party. I'd have to plan it, be at the event, make sure that everything runs smoothly, and then I would get paid whatever money that we made. So I was creating my own income but I really just created myself my own job because if I wasn't working, I wasn't getting paid. And at the time, it was great because I was starting to finally make some money for myself. But then as I thought about what is a business and I thought about the bigger businesses, I started reading more books. I realized that the biggest businesses and the bigger businesses out there, they create the ability for a person to pull themselves out of. That's real equity. Because if you think about what is equity, think about your home. If you own a home, if you bought a home for half a million dollars and you built equity in this home, you paid off, let's just say $200,000. The home was worth $500,000. You paid off $200,000. So now you have $300,000 of debt, $200,000 worth of equity. What does the equity mean? The equity means you can do one of two things. Either you can do a cash out refinance, pull some of that $200,000 of equity in the home out through a loan, or you can sell the home for half a million dollars and then get the $200,000 of equity in your pocket. That's real equity. When I was doing my event planning company, I didn't have any equity. I created a job for myself, but I had no equity in my labor. Because now if I wanted to sell that business, nobody was going to buy it. And I had no way to buy it because it re relied on me to do something. And that's when I started thinking a little bit differently of how can I build something more scalable? How can I build something that's a little bit more of a real business as opposed to just me creating my own job? 
And that's a big difference between a solopreneur and a real entrepreneur, somebody who's building a real business that doesn't require them necessarily to be there for the business to continue living. And that's not saying you shouldn't work in your own business, but if you want to build a real business, there has to be an element of replaceability to you as well. Because if the business can't run without you, it's not a real business. I'm gonna jump back into the video in just one second, but before we do, if you want to learn and build on top of your financial education, we have a free ebook in my Market Insiders company, which goes over how you can start investing your money, how you can start generating cash flow, and how you can start putting your money to work even if you don't have a lot of money to invest. This ebook is completely free, and it'll walk you through different investment strategies, how you can start investing, how you can start investing in stocks, how you can start investing in real estate, and how you can start getting cash flow on the money that you invest. So if you want to learn more about how to start investing and you want to build on top of your financial education, this is a completely free guide that you can read and access. So if you want to read the guide from Market Insiders, I got the link to how you can download this ebook for free down in the description below. If you're working a job, you're replaceable. If you died or if you could not go into work tomorrow, the company is going to find a replacement for you in the next four weeks. And maybe you're really good at your company. Maybe you're really good and they don't want to let you go. That's good. That doesn't make you irreplaceable because if you couldn't go into work tomorrow, they're going to have to find somebody to replace you. They might not be as good as you, but your equity in that company isn't going to keep paying your family if you stopped working there because you might build great rapport with the company. You might be very valuable to the company. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing. But I'm talking about for your own personal finances. If you can't go into work anymore. Your company's not going to keep paying you. Maybe you have a pension, but most companies don't offer pensions anymore. And so now where is your equity? And this is where now you are building your skill set when you work at your company and you work up in the company. When you build your skill set and your knowledge and your, your ability to provide value, you could earn more for every dollar, for every hour that you provide. You earn more dollars for every hour that you provide. But... If you stop going into work tomorrow, your paycheck's also going to stop. So again, where's that equity? What does equity mean? Equity means you can continue to keep getting paid without you having to continue going into work. And this is why the equity in your home is one of the worst kinds of equity because the equity is essentially dead equity. It doesn't do anything unless you sell it. And so this is where, well, what are the alternatives? When you take your money and you go and put it into a stock, if you go put your money into the stock market, now you're building equity in this company, in this business that you're investing in on the stock market. If you were to invest in the Amazon Corporation, I'm not telling you what to invest in, just an example. If you were to invest in the Amazon Corporation, now Amazon has a CEO that's working to drive up the profitability of Amazon. They're working to drive up the stock price of Amazon. And there are thousands of employees at Amazon that are working to make the Amazon company grow, to make more money, to produce the value that Amazon provides. When you buy one share of Amazon, you become one of the owners of Amazon. Just like that, when you go out and you invest in rental properties and you're building the equity in rental properties, now you're buying this land and this building, which is producing you cash flow. You have equity in this building that's producing you cash flow. Why? Because now there could be people living there. It could be an office that's using your building. It could be a restaurant that's operating at your building. It could be whatever type of building. Now, somebody is going to live in or use your property, and in exchange for them using your asset, your equity that you work to buy, you're going to get paid with cash flow. And if you do it correctly, the cash flow that you're getting, the rent that you're getting, should cover all of your property expenses and put some money in your pocket every single month. So now compare these equities. You can't go to work tomorrow because you got into a car accident. The company decides they're not going to keep paying you. What do you do? Well, if you have that sort of equity, you can keep getting paid. You can keep having your assets working to produce an income. If it's a rental property, they can pay you with cash flow. If it's dividend paying stocks, they can still pay you dividends. Now you might be thinking, but just breathe. It's going to take a lot of money and a lot of time for me to go out and actually own enough assets to produce a significant amount of cash flow. And you're right. It does take time. This is why I said, again, in the beginning of this video, it takes money to grow your money, but it doesn't take money to make money. If you want to make money, 
you need the hustle, you need the drive, you need the work ethic, and you need the ability to take risks, and you need the ability to learn. If you can do those things, you can go out and earn money. But if you want to grow your money, now you need more money. And this is what your equity is doing. When you're trying to create or buy this equity, now you're working to grow your money. And this is where the real wealth is built. It's about buying more stocks, buying more real estate, investing in other businesses, investing in other things that are paying you. Now, there's different ways that you can get paid. You can get paid with cash flow, or you can buy investments that go up in value, or that you're buying for the purposes of going up in value. I like cash flow. That's just the way that I am. I like buying an asset and knowing that I'm going to get paid month after month after month or quarter after quarter after quarter, because now what I'm doing is I'm just working to stack the cash flow. I'm just trying to buy more of these cash flow producing assets that we every month I'm getting paid more cash flow, more cash flow, more cash flow, because that's the way my mind works. Other people don't like that because the cash flow gets taxed. If a company is paying you with dividends, that means the company is sucking money out of their bank account. And instead of trying to grow the company bigger and faster, they're paying their shareholders. So some people don't like that. Other people say, you know what? I like a company when they take the cash and they reinvest it back into the company. That way they can't pay me a dividend, but that's going to make the company grow bigger. It's going to make the company grow faster so the stock price grows faster. Some people like that. Plus, if you're not getting paid with cash flow, you don't got to worry about paying taxes because when you get rental income or when you get dividend income, that's taxable income. Now, of course, as an attorney who's not your attorney, I can tell you that our tax code does provide benefits to investors when you make money from your rental properties, when you make money from your stock dividends. There are tax breaks that you can get that are not available to people who are earning money from their jobs. If you're just earning money from your job, you're going to be subject to the highest tax rates and the least amount of tax deductions. When you're earning money from your investments or your business, now you have the potential to earn lower tax rates and higher deductions. That's the way that our tax code works. So when you're earning money from your job, you're not subject to or those write-offs. You're not subject to the lower tax rates. But with your investments, you do get those things. And this is where, again, now, understanding the system. Our system is designed to benefit people who understand the capitalist system. That means our system, whether it's the tax code, how much money you earn, how much assets you earn, how much freedom you have, our system is designed to benefit people who understand the capitalist system. Our system is designed to benefit people who understand how to invest and how to build businesses, period. Not everybody can be an entrepreneur. Not everybody should be an entrepreneur. But every single person in America should be a business owner. Don't go out and build a business if you're not an entrepreneur, but you can go out and invest in businesses if you're not an entrepreneur. Both of them will allow you to win in this economic system. You don't have to go out and build a business, but you can invest in other businesses. Everybody can do that, and you can start doing that with as little as $100, even $10, even $1. Once you start your wealth journey, the next question is going to be, how do I grow my wealth? How do I double my wealth? Because the faster that you can grow and double your wealth, the wealthier you're going to be. Because now you can just keep stacking and doubling and growing and compounding and building your wealth. And there's a couple different ways that you can do that. And you don't have to quit your job and go and become an entrepreneur to do this. 